because the the text is so quick there's such a pace to it it meant that like our physical movements had to be quick we were like marmy was constantly running around the house like beth would be playing the piano or looking through music you'd be like making a cast of your foot i'd be writing like she needed us to fill that space yeah. with like physicality as well so with the result we weren't I, don't, I mean, I certainly didn't feel like I was stepping into a costume drama where everything is supposed to be very sort of stoic and poised and all that. There was movement to it. She plays a lot with um, childhood and your experience when you're coming into the adult world and when you're essentially a single mother. So I think it was, a, you know, the, the thing that I keep saying to people is that if you're going to do Little Women again, you've got to do something different with it. You mm -hmm. can't just sort of do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, cinematically, it's a very effective, powerful thing to, for example, when we all know what Beth goes through, she gets sick to begin with when they're younger and then she gets much sicker later on and the result is is dire um, and we know what's coming because we've seen what's happened in the past and so she has these like connections between one moment that existed in the past and one moment that's existing in the present and we it's like she's acknowledging us she's going like you know what's gonna happen and mm. I'm piecing it together for you yeah. and I just think you know audiences are sort of smarter than we give them credit for and she's allowing them to sort of think for themselves and like piece it together so I've also never seen nostalgia played out as well as mm. this flashback and flash forward. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that these women as adults come up against, there's a reason as to why they feel that way and you're instantly transported back to when they were younger mm. and why they are the way that they are. And that was just so, I mean, when we were making it, we weren't doing it in, in order. We were doing different scenes all over the place. So watching it and seeing Greta's idea on screen and it being successful and it working and it making you feel mm. was uh, so wonderful to see. It was amazing. Uh, I mean, we became family instantly. And, you know, it's interesting, as opposed to feeling like we were stepping into something we needed to pay homage to or that was iconic, instantly, Greta, our amazing costume designer, Jacqueline, working with makeup and hair, we were asked to dive into this revolutionary, progressive mess of being human. And that was the energy of it. And it felt like any other character you were trying to discover. There was never a moment where I was like, oh, she's so wise or she's so poetic mm. as a mother. It was like, God, what is motherhood? It's complicated. It's overwhelming. <laughs> if you're in the middle it's of stressful. poverty and you're basically acting as a single parent, raising four kids, how do you do that? Mm. That was the energy Greta wanted in the space at all times, you know, and that I think took all the pressure or ideology that you would mm, layer on mm. to we're making little women um, and that was exciting like an actor reconsidering or exploring Shakespeare you're just totally. diving into understanding these people at its core like any great story it's simple it's about the mm. pursuit of someone's destiny of your own destiny it's about the loss of childhood and how precious that is and you only kind of realise that when it's over. It's about family relying on one another and sort of frustrating each other but always being there to support one another. You know, it's about drive. It's about somebody's drive and, and the frustration when they're trying to just like break through, you know. And, and I think it's no coincidence that Louisa wrote five very different women who were on their own journeys and at different points in their life and happiness sort of took different forms for all of them mm. because it meant that a reader would be able to find themselves in each woman. On Lady Bird I was terrified <laughs> and I think it was I loved it, but it was really wonderful to have done her first film with her and then I think for the two of us to come back together with everyone else and like for all of us to come to this material for the first time mm -hmm. and we've all kind of got our own experiences with Louise's book and 
I don't know, it felt, it just felt like everyone was able to bring a piece of themselves to it. And she just is constantly evolving as a filmmaker, constantly growing. She's, I mean, she's always been very sure, I think, of, of what kind of a filmmaker she is and what kind of movie she wants to make. But that kind of command over her set, for example, has just kind of grown and grown. I always try to remember what it was that I was like in those moments, like when I met her or when I happened to act with her. And I genuinely have no idea because I think I was just gazing at her all the time. Um, she's a magnificent woman and she's so intelligent as like a person and in her acting. And it was just like a total dream for, I'm sure, all of us to work with her because she's someone that we all grow up and admire. I have an older brother and a twin sister, and I, I feel like we're, we're generally mellow people, um, but I'm definitely the more abrasive one of the two. And yeah, I, I guess a lot of things can end up in a few slaps and a few nasty words thrown at each other. It's the thing that I loved that, and the thing that Greta made sure we did was the constant noise and the constant talking over the top of one another and everybody's doing a different activity. And that's something that I love when I watch the film is if you just look in the background, there are like four other people doing something completely different. They've got and their that, own story. Yeah, <laughs> and that is totally what it's like being in a small or a big family with siblings. It's like you're just on each other all the time and you're interested in each other all the time. Now, Hilary Swank was able to naturally sink into her role as the tough girl Maggie Fitzgerald in Million Dollar Baby. Swank says she had a very similar upbringing to Maggie, having had a poor and difficult childhood, living out of a car with her mum after her father left the family when she was six. 